Michael Swigert here. Welcome to Enchanting People of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, the chili capital of the world. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts every Monday and Friday. We have regular historical and cultural New Mexico podcasts. Wednesdays, like today, we celebrate people important to our area. One of the most interesting people of New Mexico was New Mexico-born Conrad Hilton Sr. You now know mostly about him because he had hotels. I mean, you know the Hilton Hotel. But there is ever so much more to his story. Today, when you say Hilton, the first guess most people make is I'm talking about Paris. Nope. I'll mention Paris shortly, but it'll be Paris, France, where Conrad Hilton served as an army officer in the Quartermaster Corps during the First World War. That's the only Paris I'm going to talk about. His grand and great-grandkids have little to nothing to do with New Mexico other than there are Hilton hotels in New Mexico, and they're nice. So let me introduce you to the very interesting Conrad Nicholson Hilton Sr., he is a Christmas baby, born December 25th, 1887. He was born in San Antonio, New Mexico. Not San Antonio, Texas. Yes, there is a San Antonio, New Mexico on Interstate 25 where it intersects US 380, about 12 miles south of Socorro, New Mexico. A little about San Antonio, New Mexico today. Located there is the Bosque de Apache National wildlife refuge, a 57,000-acre wilderness that provides a stopover site for migrating waterfowl. The refuge is the site of tens of thousands of cranes, geese, and ducks who winter in the area each year and was established in 1939. Sandhill cranes are especially appreciated by the tourists who come every day to view the birds and animals in the wilderness. What the tourists and many New Mexicans, including myself, have found is that San Antonio, New Mexico has two, not one, but two excellent cafes with great green chili cheeseburgers. I know because I have had lunch at both cafes, not the same day, and the green chili cheeseburgers are famous. In fact, there is a bit of a rivalry between the Owl Cafe and the Buckhorn Tavern over who has the best chili cheeseburgers. In the Old West, I suppose it had been the fastest green chili cheeseburger, but both are excellent. Instead of the question red or green, if you're on Interstate 25 going north and you stop by the Owl or the Buckhorn, that's the question, which one? I love both, and I usually flip a coin when I stop there to see which of the two great cafes I'm going to enjoy that day. In 2009, Food Network's Bobby Flay came to San Antonio to challenge Buckhorn's Bobby Olguin, and after all the cooking and tasting and tabulating, the Buckhorn Green Chili Cheeseburger came in best. I've had the owls, I've had the Buckhorn's best. It's a winner in either place, and as they say in research, well, further research is warranted, and <laughs> you bet I'd like to have more of both. Back to Conrad Hilton. The Hilton story starts one generation before Conrad with Gus Hilton. That's Conrad's father. He immigrated from Norway to San Antonio, New Mexico. Actually, it was to a much smaller town nearby that no one remembers. Carthage, New Mexico was the town. And in the 1880s, it had a railroad spur because it was a coal mining town. Now it's a ghost town, if that. It's just east of San Antonio, but at its high point it had 300 residents, and Gus Hilton came to get work since he had traveled from Norway and needed work. Here's where the story gets interesting. At some point he got the, a great idea, since being a coal miner was no picnic, and he was looking for a way to make his fortune. The coal mine at Carthage served a number of army forts, such as Fort Stanton, Fort Selden, Fort Bayard. The life of a coal miner was difficult, to say the least. So Gus Hilton was looking 
to do something else. And he somehow, the details are not clear how he came up with this. He came up with an interesting plan. Here's Gus's idea. He would get a mule and get two 20-gallon wooden barrels, which he tied to the mule, and then he would go to the gold and silver mining camps in the Black Range near present-day Hillsboro and sell whiskey by the drink for gold and silver ore. He was armed with a gun and had a couple of shot glasses. Obviously, Gus Hilton was tough, so he wasn't robbed for his money and whiskey. Gus Hilton did this a number of times until he had enough money to start a small store in San Antonio, New Mexico, right next to the railroad tracks. Conrad was the second of eight children born to Gus and his wife Mary. He was the first boy who was born. So Conrad grew up working in the Gus Hilton store, and a funny thing happened to the store. As new children were born, Gus would add a room for the new child that was born whenever they were born. I remember there was eight of them, which was the store and the house were tied together. After each birth, Gus would be busy making another room. Years later, yes, the years went by, after some of the Hilton kids grew up and they left, the Hilton store started renting out those rooms that were no longer needed for children. The store and Hilton house was right on the train station in San Antonio, New Mexico. Therefore, it was the first Hilton hotel with 10 rooms that were really appreciated by travelers in the area. This is Michael Swickard, Enchanting People of New Mexico. Each Wednesday we do a podcast about people who are special to New Mexico. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Conrad Hilton was born in the territory of New Mexico and was immersed in the operation of the Gus Hilton store and hotel. But at age 22, he was, he was involved with what was going on in his community. At age 22, he attended a constitutional convention that wrote the Constitution of the State of New Mexico, which intended to finally get the territory of New Mexico to finally become a state. From the start of being a territory in 1850, one thing and another kept killing New Mexico's attempts to be a state. This was the sixth try at statehood. This time, when the statewide vote was taken, it was approved by a three-to-one margin of the voters in New Mexico. This was in January of 1911, and the state officially became a United States state on January 6th, 1912. Conrad was there watching in another way since he ran for the House of Representatives in the New Mexico legislature and served two terms in the heavily Republican House, of which he was a Republican. But he was bothered by politics, even though he was in the party in control. He was bothered because the politics he was around was I win and you lose. Whereas in business, which is what he really liked, it was win, win, or no deal. He was in where both the seller and the buyer had to be happy or there was no deal. So 1916, his fourth year in the legislature, was the last year he served. In April 1917, America was brought into the conflict of World War I, and so Conrad Hilton joined the Army as a reserve officer out of a ROTC unit. He became a second lieutenant and went to France, Paris, France. He was stationed there in Paris, France, in the Quartermaster Corps, which had many similarities to running a store. And while he was serving after the war had ended, he was still there in Paris, France, he got bad news. His father, Gus, was killed in an automobile accident. So he returned to San Antonio, New Mexico, and with his siblings, they sold the store and hotel because nobody wanted to run it, or maybe they couldn't. It was sold in Conrad with his inheritance, and what he had saved while in the Army, he was very frugal, was free to pursue his great dream. You know what his great dream was? He wanted to own a bank. That's what he wanted to do at age 32. But there was a problem. His purchase of a bank fell through, and so he was in Cisco, Texas, 
and found a 40-room Mobley Hotel, is its name, for sale at a reasonable price, and he bought it. He became a hotel owner. So Cisco, Texas, <clears throat> that was the place he got started in hotels. At the time in 1919, there was an oil boom in Texas, and at the height of the boom, he bought that hotel instead of a bank. The bank purchase had fallen through, and he realized in the boom times, the 40-room Mobley Hotel in Cisco, Texas, just north of Dallas, was renting rooms quite often for eight hours at a time. So three times a day, a new oil worker was there to get a place to sleep. Over the next 20 years, there were very good times and there where he built hotels in Texas, including in Dallas, Abilene, Waco, and El Paso. He also built the Albuquerque Hilton. Then the Great Depression came, and many businesses failed. He barely made it through without going bankrupt, but he learned a strong lesson. And so from the 1940s on, the Hilton Hotel Corporation got stronger and stronger. Now, he was married three times during this period of time in 1925 for nine years with three kids, Conrad Jr., Baron, and Eric. And in 1942, this is a surprise, he married Zsa Gabor. <laughs> what a surprise. They had one child and divorced five years later. In 1976, Hilton married for the final time and passed away at age 91 three years later. What is interesting to me about the Hiltons, Gus and Conrad, is their entrepreneurial spirit that from the beginning to the modern times was so very special. He served New Mexico in the first state legislature. He served the country, and he really did serve what it meant to be a good businessman. He was one of the most interesting New Mexicans. Now, I want to tell you about something just now on the shelves of the Fresh Chili Company. It's Hatch Sweet Onion Dressing. Now, everybody knows that the Hatch Valley is renowned for chili since it's the chili capital of the world. Onions from Hatch Valley and surrounding fields are some of the sweetest. This Hatch Sweet Onion Dressing combines Hatch Sweet Onions with avocado oil and our very own green chili Dijon mustard. It creates a dressing that is so good. You can marinate, you can baste with it, you can douse it on your salads and fruit with it, and I put it on my baked potato and love it. It is so much the taste sensation. I really do love this sweet onion dressing. Now, one thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces or happen to be in our little slice of paradise, they can come by the Fresh Chili Company's gift shop at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, I need to tell you there's some new products that you may want to go look at. And if you go by there, you can see them. There's a local honey with hatch red chili that I have to tell you from personal experience is really great on biscuits. French fries are ever so much better with the Fresh Chili Company's Hatchup. That is a ketchup with hatch red chili hatchup. Now, you can come and browse, and there's many surprises. There's some frozen things that you may want. Again, Monday to Saturday, the Fresh Chili Company's gift shop, 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces, New Mexico, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Michael Swickard here. This is Enchanting People of New Mexico. Thank you for your time today. We will always have lots of news and stories about New Mexico for you on these podcasts. If you have something you want me to talk about in a future podcast, you can write to michael at freshchilico.com, michael at freshchilico.com. The same is true if there's someone you would like me to talk about, somebody important here in New Mexico to the way we have developed. So have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good, more is better. Bye for now.